I didn't know this was a wrong. I didn't know to tell someone this never felt right. This is wrong. I want to speak up. I want to say something, but now I'm embarrassed. Especially now nobody will believe me. Anyways, I'm a grown man. My past is my past. They say time heals. I'm waiting to see if that's true. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two, testing. Let's try this again. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. This sermon is for all the people who have not been okay. What a great question. Am I okay? No, but I'm about to be. This sermon is for everybody that's been holding on to pain that wasn't your fault. And This sermon is for everybody that's been hurting and holding it for so long that you don't even know how to let it go. We don't have enough tissue and oil for what's about to happen in here. For too long, churches played first grade when I need master's level deliverance. This sermon is for everybody that's ever felt like they were overlooked, left for dead, made fun of. This sermon is for those of us who have never been clearly seen. Turn these lights up just a little. This sermon is for you. For those of you who are nervous, good, because I am too. Because this is the sermon that if I died tomorrow, I'd want played at my funeral. So I'm going to need you to lean in. And let's have a real moment of freedom. Because church has been a show for so long, people don't even know how to get free. Church has devolved into emotionalism and politics and cliques. But today, we're going to lay all that down, and we're going to go after Jesus. This sermon is for the wounded, but we keep worshiping. This sermon is for the imperfect. For those of us who have made terrible mistakes asked for forgiveness, and then did it again. Oh, it's three of y'all. The rest of y'all, okay. This sermon is for the black sheep in the family when you're really not the black sheep. You're just a sheep trying to lead the other ones away from danger. This sermon is for the people who can't seem to get it right in relationships because you haven't had a healthy relationship with yourself. I told the men that if I don't make it through, just come grab me and carry me off. But I'm going to do my best to get through it because somebody else needs to get free today.
As of right now, you have permission to cry, to scream out, to lie on the ground, to do whatever it takes to get free once and for all. If you ain't never been allowed to be your true self at church, may today be that day. And may we not judge and stare at people who need a freedom that church don't let them have. is for those who thought that death was a better option than the pain. This sermon is for those who everybody else looked down on because of one moment in your life. But God didn't throw you away even though people did. This message is for those who are tired of playing politics with your freedom. Because church doesn't let you be who you truly are. Because church folk will look at you and judge you. And isn't that funny? Because everybody who should have been judged in the New Testament, when they encountered Jesus, they got mercy. They got grace. They got forgiveness. They got another chance. And today, Relentless is going to look like Jesus. I need somebody to worship even if you don't know how, even if you don't know why. Just go ahead, get free right now. Get Lord, please help me. I'm going to ask you to do one thing with me and then I'm going to do my best to preach this word as the Lord has given it to me. Go to Genesis 32. Starting at the 22nd verse. Genesis 32. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed over the ford Yabok. A ford is like a creek. Yabok, or if you are speaking it in English, it would say Jabok, but it is Yabok. In Hebrew, it means emptying. And it is time for you to empty yourself from the poison that you've been carrying and the pain that you've been carrying and the shame that you've been carrying and the questions that you've been carrying and all of the lies that were told to you by people who were supposed to speak life. He took them, sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Sometimes you're going to have to wrestle injured. Everybody thinks that church, some people think church is the place where you come to get perfect. No. Church is the place where you come to acknowledge your consistent imperfections in the face of Jesus' holiness. Jesus is the only one in this church that's perfect. And we must all find ourselves at the foot of the cross. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, no, nah, I've been in this too long. I've been, I've been in pain too long. I've been hurting too long. I will not let you go unless you bless me. 
So he said to him, what is your name? And what God said to him is what I say to you. What's your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled, struggled. Today's message is for those of us who struggle. It's real quiet. For those of us who struggle and have struggled. See, here's the thing. Church doesn't celebrate those who struggle. We always want to celebrate the victory and those who get it after, after it's done, then we want to show. But I want to acknowledge those who struggle because at least you're fighting. Today's word is for the struggle. He said, He said, no, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men. Because some of y'all had problems with God because he didn't show up when you thought he should. I know I've been there. Kind of God would let some of the things that happened to me happen. And I'm not the only one that feels that way. God, if you knew I wasn't ready, why'd you bring him into my life if you knew I was going to ruin it? My heart was pure, and then they showed up and corrupted it. I, I ask you to keep me from this. You struggle with God and men and have prevailed. Then Jacob Asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, what is it or why is it that you ask about my name? The connotation is, don't worry about my name. Just know yours has been changed. Oh. And in giving you a new name, I've told you my name because only the one who creates can give it a name. I'm already preaching while you're standing. He said... Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. Jacob had been carrying trauma from when he was a little boy. He had been carrying pain since he was a little boy and the struggle didn't start after he was born because the prophecy said to the mama two nations are in your womb and they are already at war and the older shall serve the younger somebody shout two nations help me Holy Ghost sometimes I know that you don't want to talk about it, but it feels like there's more than one of you inside of you. I need some help to make sure I'm talking to the right church. I'm not the only one that's felt like, is something wrong with me? Because there are times when I'm on fire for God and then all of a sudden this devil shows up and I thought that thing was gone. And where did that come from? I thought I got delivered from that and that thing is still here. There's a part of you that wants to be faithful. Then there's another part that wants to whore around. And you thought that thing was dead. And you fighting against one another. There are two nations inside of you. And church is supposed to be the place where you're allowed to talk about your struggle. But instead, we've turned it into an entertainment complex where truth is not even welcome. Give me the cosmetics of freedom without the substance of it. Tell me they sang real good and shouted real good, but you still have the same demonic strongholds in your life that you walked in with. It ends today. I need a towel. 
This is the new sermon series, FaceTime. Because Jacob had been running his whole life. Then he had to face God. So we're going to face some things over the next month and a half or so. Today we're going to talk from FaceTime, childhood trauma. Speak, Jesus. We need deliverance and freedom today. Amen. How many microphones do you see on the stands? Say it loud. How many chairs do you see at the table? How many chairs are at the table? It's five. Somebody say it for a count. One, two, three, four, five. You can't see it. One, two, three, four. The truth is, each one of these chairs represents a version of me. Lord, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. The story of Jacob, Israel, I mean Jacob, I mean Israel, I mean Israel, I mean Jacob, I mean you, I mean your former you, I mean the earlier you, I mean the you that's free, I mean the one that was in bondage, I mean Jacob, I mean Israel. Um, I don't think you understand the significance of Genesis 32. But I want you to take a look at the screen because there's something happening in the earth right now that you need to be aware of. This is happening right now in real time. Have they shown the, what does that say at the top? It, say it loud. For those who don't know, Hamas, which is a militant group of the Palestinians, uh, launched an unprecedented air, land, and sea attack against the nation of Israel, which is 75 years old, but it's actually not 75 years old. And that's why I'm here to talk today. I had no clue, and I there's no way for me to know that we are in the middle of history while God told me to start preaching this sermon series right now. Because Israel declares war you think of a nation in the Middle East, but Israel is a name that is 3,900 years old. It might as well say Jacob declares. I need help. Somebody pray for me today. Israel declares war. And they got to be some real unwise people to declare war on somebody that God has blessed. And this is not the time to shout, but I got to throw this one out there. And the people who declared war against you have not made you their enemy. They made God their enemy. I got one. I got two. I got, do I have anybody else? They thought they were coming against you, but they are not coming against you because you didn't call you, you didn't make you, you didn't name you, God did, and so you, you may want to leave me alone now because I'm actually not your enemy, you just made God your enemy. Last I checked, he's never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. Matthew 24 is happening in your lifetime while you're sitting in these pews, while you're making plans, while you're figuring out what to have for dinner this afternoon. You need to understand that Jesus is preparing to mount a white horse and break out of eternity back into time. He is coming back just as the scripture has said. 
And he's coming back for his bride, the church. And if you don't see that everything that he said is happening right now, there was another earthquake yesterday in the Middle East. And Matthew 24 says war, rumors of war, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, pestilences in various places. See to it that you are not alarmed for the end is not yet. You need to understand that we are living in history that is happening and it is quite possible that before you close your eyes and go from death to eternal life you will see Jesus crack the sky with the holy angels and the sound of a trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise first and those that remain will be caught up to meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord give the Lord of heaven the greatest shout that you can But until he comes back, we have work to do. Tell somebody we have work to do. But there's some work I can't do because I'm divided. Israel, he, he, Jacob, I'm sorry, I mean Israel, wait. Well, what's his name? Is it Jacob? Is it Israel? Well, it's two nations. But well, which one is going to win? Well, it depends on the level of the fight. Some of us have been busted up and down in the spirit by the devil since we were little. But God says today, I need you to ball your fist up and start swinging. I've got to set this up right. Give me a moment and then I'm going to try to get through this sermon so that you can get free and I can get free once and for all. We started the scripture at Genesis 32 and 22, but if you read the first 21 verses, you will find out that Jacob was actually running from Esau, his brother. And the truth is, Pastor Robert, they had been in contention with one another since they were in their mother's womb. Esau came out first. Jacob stuck his hand out and said, no, nah, not so fast, homeboy. Grabbed him by the heel. He's a heel grabber. That's what the name Jacob means. He trips people. He tricks people. He stops people. He, he goes after what doesn't have his name on it. No, you're not getting away. And it looks like he's going after something that doesn't belong to him. But the prophetic declaration from God God is that the older will serve the younger. It's important for you to get that because everybody wants to blame Jacob, but God knew what it was before it was. So the first 21 verses of Genesis 32 set up the fact that after years of contention, years of running, there was no more running to do. There comes a time in your life when you can't run anymore. Today is that day for us. Today is the day for you, Rock family. This is the moment where you can't run. You could probably tip out because some of y'all right now, your heart's beating so fast because your spirit is already connected with the spirit of this word. And something in you is like, get out now, run now. Just put your finger up, run now because you're not ready for this emotionally. That's the devil that doesn't want you to get free. So tell that demon to shut up, sit right here and don't move because all of the hell you've been through is about to give way to the freedom you've been praying for and crying about and searching for and boyfriends and girlfriends and in some of y'all you tried both and neither of them worked and I'm here to tell you that whatever you've tried from people to weed to liquor to drugs to pain to porn all of it pales in comparison to the liberty and freedom that is found in Christ Jesus and I'm here to tell you if you're willing to get in the ring and wrestle with God you will get what you've been praying for is there anybody that's ready to wrestle Bible says, I'm giving you a synoptic version of the first 21 verses. I have to set it up. Esau was coming after Jacob. Jacob asked one of his servants, did you see my brother? He said, yeah, I saw him. He's heading towards you now. He got 400 men with him. 
Jacob immediately was like, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Listen, all right, so I need to get five companies, four or five companies, and I need y'all to stagger yourselves, and I need to put an offering in each one of your hands. So as Esau is coming and he says, who are you with? Y'all say, I'm from the house of Jacob, and he wants to see you, Lord Esau, and he brought a gift to you, but my master is behind me. And so he set it up that every time Esau got closer to him, he'd get another offering. And if you read the scripture, it says he was afraid of Esau. So he kept trying to appease him with stuff. Oh my God. But there are some things that you can't pay off. Some stuff you're going to have to face. Lord God in heaven, help me. So then he did this four or five times. Then the Bible says it, it was night. He had his family with him and he went to sleep. It was like, but he got up. The Bible says he arose in the middle of the night because he couldn't sleep. Because when you know somebody's trying to kill you, you can't sleep. Some of y'all are like, man, I ain't never. Yes, you have. That's why you can't sleep now. That's why you twist and turn. That's why you sweat all night. Because you fight, and that's why you have ulcers now. It's, it's, it's not medical, it's spiritual. That's why you need a little nightcap at night to try to calm your nerves, because at least it edges the pain off. But today, you're going to get free, and you're not going to need that anymore. Esau was coming after him because Esau was still angry that Jacob stole the birthright. That's what he feels. He feel like... Jacob took my future. But the fact is, Esau sold it. And here's what's funny. God knew he would sell it. That's why he said from the beginning, Jacob I love, Esau have I hated. That's before they were born. That's when they were babies. How you going to hate a baby? It's not the baby I'm hating because I'm God. I know what he's going to be and what he's going to do, and I already reject him. Oh, Lord. So now Jacob is 97 years old. He's been running his whole life. He's been a trickster his whole life. He's been a liar his whole life. He's been in bondage his whole life. And here's the thing. It started as a child, and it wasn't his fault because it was his mammy who was setting him up. And she was like, you need to, okay, this is what we're going to do. All right, this is what we're going to do, okay? All right, Jacob, listen. All right, this is what you want to do, okay? Because your brother, he going to get the birthright, but I don't like him. Your brother, is, he's, he's, he's some timey. So listen, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to make some stew, and you're going to take it into your daddy, all right? And then I'm going to put some fake hair on your arms because your brother is hairy. He ain't seen no razor. And what we're going to do is we're going to trick your daddy. I need you to change your voice because you don't have no bass in your voice, Jacob, because what, what's unspoken here is that Jacob was a mama's boy. And in a Middle Eastern patriarchal society, that's the last thing you want to be is a tender mama's boy. He was soft. Esau was out in the fields killing stuff. Jacob been there like, well, how much more paprika do I put in this stew? He was not a trickster. He was made one by his mom. What happened to you that wasn't your fault? Who was supposed to be something but ended up not being what you needed, but you didn't have a choice? You didn't even know what it was. You're just you. Some of us didn't even know something was wrong because it was normal. For some of us, abuse was normal. For some of us, being talked to like trash was normal. And then somebody in your life later comes, woman of God, to speak life. You don't even trust them because they're talking a language that you weren't raised in. You searched for an abuser because at least it was familiar. You didn't even know how to receive love. Because what you grew up in was so broken. Jacob tricked his brother out of his birthright. And Esau said, when I find him, I'm going to kill him. Jacob knew tonight's the night. Today's the day. Look at somebody say, today's the day. 
I know you didn't expect it. You came here with your nice heels and your stockings on, and you just wanted to have a nice service and tell everybody, oh, it was a wonderful, it was a nice church, a big building, really nice. And they sang so good, and they bl- the baby blessing. I ain't never seen no baby blessing like that. That's wonderful. No, you've been invited to freedom, and today's the day. Jacob had been fighting with everything that he was raised in, everything he had been running from, and that's all right, woman of God. See, it's going to be a lot of that in the next 20 or 30 minutes, so please don't judge. Don't be looking around, well, what's wrong with them? No, you should be asking, what's wrong with you? Because church is for those of us who can acknowledge something is wrong. All right, let's, let's try this again. I don't come here to worship because the songs are nice. I come here because I need God to come and fix something on the inside because something is wrong. Even Paul said, when I would do good, evil is always what's wrong with me. Jacob knew his brother's coming. He going to kill me. He going to kill my wives. He going to kill my sons. He's going to kill everything. The Bible says he couldn't sleep, so he got up and he told his wives and kids, his, his female servants and all this stuff. He sent it over the yabok. As I said, it means emptying. Because when today's the day, nobody can fight for you but you. Mama can't help you with this one. Daddy can't help you with this one. Brothers and sisters can't help you. They can't get in the ring. This is not the bully at the school where your siblings come and beat them up because you can't fight. No, God says, you're going to have to go ahead and get in the ring. You're going to have to fight with me. Nobody else can fight for you on this. You're going to have to face me. You need some face time with God. Jacob had been running. He was 97. Can you imagine carrying the weight and the fear and the shame of a name that was given to you that wasn't your fault? Can you imagine having to introduce yourself to people by the thing you are least proud of, the thing you are most ashamed of? Your name is trickster. Your name is pimp. Your name is heel grabber. Your name is the one who can't get it right and legal. So you got to trick other people to get it. Can you imagine having to introduce yourself as, I had an abortion. Yeah, what's your name? Yeah, I, I, was, a, I was a product of incest. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we're going to have to get free. You're going to have to talk to your kids. I won't go too far, but we got to talk about some stuff. Because when Alicia said she had an abortion at 31, some of the air went out the room, but God showed up in the middle of it. Because somebody needs to be honest that I wasn't always leading worship. I wasn't always preaching. I wasn't always a Christian. There were some things I did that I wish I hadn't done, but I'm so glad that God didn't call me by that thing. I need everybody in here who's grateful that God has not named you by the thing you're least proud of to give him a praise. Can you imagine the pain of having to introduce yourself over high? I'm a liar. I'm a thief. What's your name? Oh, I'm a whore. What's your name? I cheat on my taxes. What's your name? Well, me? I'm just nasty. I I, I sleep with anything moving because I got a big hole in the middle of my soul. So I tried women. I tried men. I tried everything. You know, that's me. Nice to meet you. What if you had to introduce yourself by the thing only the blood could cover? Jacob had childhood trauma. And the truth is that trauma followed him. And no matter how many times he tried to get free, he was always brought back to the thing that he was raised in, the thing that happened to him first. Because very few of us graduate past the place of first offense.
Turn the mics on. Testing one, two. Hi. Hi. My name is John Gray. I am four years old. I got a picture. I want y'all to see my picture. I got a picture, but that's me. I'm four years old. I'm on my big wheel. That's my big wheel. That's 806 East Mitchell. And my daddy had already left. It was just me and my mama. And right by that tree, something happened to me. I was four years old, about four and a half. And these two boys from the neighborhood, they. One of them pee peed in my mouth. And I spit it out and I said, I'm going to go tell my mama. And he said, if you tell, you'll be the one that gets in trouble. So I didn't tell nobody for 15 years. And I carried it in my soul until right now. My name is John Gray, and I'm still in here, and I'm four years old. <laughs> my name is John Gray. And I want you to see my picture because I have on my red and white Nike shirt. And I'm 12 years old. I'm 12 years old. I'm in the eighth grade. And one of my friends, his name, his name was Cedric. He handed me a piece of paper. It had three phone numbers on it. It was 1-900 numbers. 1-900 numbers when I was 12 years old. And he told me when I get home, call those numbers and listen to what the lady says. I didn't even know what she was saying, but something in my body responded. And I was introduced to pornography at 12 years old by a friend at school. That's why parents, you gotta be real careful who you let your kids hang with. I'm 12 years old, and I'm already addicted to the sound of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't even know what the lady's talking about, but it, it awakens something in my soulish realm. And I started hiding and lying. When my mama got the phone bill, and she said, what are all these numbers? And I lied and told her, I don't know. I didn't make them. And my mother being so in love with her son and maybe not willing to see the truth, called the phone company and said, you need to send somebody out here. My son didn't make these calls. I hid for years. I didn't tell her till I was a grown man. Mama, I made them calls. Didn't nobody break in the house and call 1-900 numbers. It was me. But it started with 1-900 numbers and then it went to Playboy. One of my family members had a couple of them in his dresser. I would tear a page out, go to the bathroom. It's where I discovered self-gratification. It lingered. So now there's a four-year-old broken boy, and now there's a 12-year-old broken boy, and they're in the same body. My name is John Gray. I'm 21 years old, and I'm about to preach my first sermon. This is what I look like the night I preached my first sermon. That's my mama. She played the piano that night. And you look on my face, I'm sad because I'm still trying to find me while I'm fighting me. It got real quiet. Because sometimes while you're looking for yourself, you still trying to find yourself while looking for yourself. 
but between 12 and 21, I got called to ministry at 13, made a commitment to Jesus at 16 that I'd be a virgin when I got married, thinking that virginity meant I'm not, I'm not having sex. And what I knew about sex was that once you go inside of a woman, that sex, I didn't know that sex and sexuality included lust, sin, masturbation, heavy petting, and all these other things that the church doesn't tell you about until it's too late. So here I am at 21 trying to preach a sermon the best I can to say yes to God. And the very pastors that were supposed to help me pushed me away, rejected me, and one of them tried to hit on me. And that'll mess with your head because when I told people I was going to be a virgin when I got married, they made fun of me, called me a punk, a sissy, a fag, called me all kinds of names, kept calling me gay. And then when you don't know who you are, you start questioning, well, am I? Nobody wants to be honest, but I'm going to get free even if you don't. So now I'm 21 trying to say yes to a God that I didn't even think cared about me, let alone heard me. And he's supposed to be my father, but the father that was supposed to be there when I was four years old wasn't there. He should have been there to keep me from them boys that took my innocence away. But now you want me to worship an invisible father when I already have an invisible father? My name is John Gray, and I'm 37 years old, and I'm getting married today. Her name is Aventer. She's from Alabama. Man, there's something different about her. She, she likes she like sophisticated country. She's sophisticated and country. I like that. She's smart. She got her degrees. I just got a high school diploma and an anointing. Something about her is different, but I don't know what it is. And I know that I need something like her, but none of us know what to do with her. Nobody else going to be honest in here. But I'm 37 and something's got to give. I've been living in sin. I've been living in lust. I've been struggling with all of this stuff. I've been telling these people I'm a virgin, but I'm stuck in pornography and I'm struggling with my identity and I don't know who I am. But my gift is so amazing that people don't ask me about me. They just use me for what I can do for them. So I make all this money for all these preachers, but nobody comes to check on my soul. So I need something to break because yes, I'm anointed, but I'm still nasty. Yes, I'm anointed, but I'm still struggling. Yes, I'm anointed, but I'm still masturbating. Yes, I'm anointed, but I'm still looking at porn. Is anybody going to come see about me? My name is John Gray, and I'm 50 years old. And I'm the pastor of Relentless Church. I came here five years ago on a word and got my behind kicked by people who were supposed to cover me. I thought it was about ministry. It was about money. So now I'm punched in the face with the reality that everybody don't love God just because they preach from a pulpit. I brought a dream team together, the biggest names, the most anointed people. I brought it together, but I didn't have any substance of understanding of what it meant to be a pastor or a leader because I had never ever seen a healthy relationship in ministry on a personal level because everybody, almost everybody used me. But here I am at 50 years old and the five of us 
are still here. But today, only one of us will remain standing. It's time to wrestle. I said it's time to wrestle. Because I'm not going to live my life in bondage forever. So I'm going to send over everything that I have because I've already failed enough. Because between the day I got married and today, I done broke that woman's heart. I don't even know how many times. But here's the thing. Every time I told her I was sorry, I really meant it because it was me talking. But I wasn't talking because I didn't know how to talk that talk because that's 13 years from right now. And this was 10 years from there because I, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. It was 16 years from 21 to 37. And he's single. And so is this one. And this one is single too. And I'm only four years old. So Aventer didn't know she wasn't marrying one man, she was marrying five. And depending on the trauma, that's which one would show up. <laughs> You've been... You've only been married to 20% of me. The part of me that got married is the youngest. But the other four, the other, the other 80%, we now marry, we single. So you were married to 20% of a man. But today I'm gonna make everybody sit at the table. All five of us gonna sit down and have a wrestling match. And we're going to have a, a conversation over a drink of water. Water is symbolic of the word. We're going to put some word on this thing. Well, I'm four years old, and all I know is since I got abused, I'm not going to let nobody get close, and nobody's ever going to hurt me again. So I'm not going to ever understand what intimacy is because I'm not going to let you see into me, into me see. I won't let you get close because I was abused. So even if I look like I let you close, I'm not going to let you close because I got hurt the last time I let my guard down. Four-year-old John, have a drink of water. Ha have some word, four-year-old John. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and appointed you a prophet to the nations. Well, I'm 12-year-old John, and I've been struggling with the after effects of the abuse at four for eight years now. And now they introduced me to porn, which compounded the shame of a moment that was told to me it was my fault. So apparently I chose that. So maybe I'm choosing this too. Maybe I'm dirty. Maybe I'm unclean. Come here, 12-year-old John. Have a drink of water. Water is symbolic of the word, and every aspect of you needs to be reconciled. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You need a word over the wounded versions of yourself. You need a word that declares that you are not a mistake. You are not your sin. You are not your iniquity. You are not the thing that you were introduced to. You are not the sum total of bad decisions. I'm 21-year-old John looking for a father that never came, waiting on my dad to show up at my games, Elder Dennis. He never came. He was never coming. My brother is seven years older than me, and he was raised by his mom and stepdad, and he's just as wounded because he wasn't there for either one of us. 
And my brother's still trying to figure life out, heading towards 60, and I'm 50. And I've been fighting my whole life in front of people. They celebrate you when they get what they want, and then they throw you in the trash when they see your humanity. But 21-year-old John's going to get some word. Oh, I need some help. Just some, tell somebody, take a drink. Take a drink. You need to get some water on that situation. You need a word that will speak to your soul. You need a word that will heal you because there's too many of you and the wrong one is making decisions and God says y'all need to reconcile and all of y'all need to come together and it needs to happen right now. This sermon is almost over and your freedom is almost here, but I need you to pray your pastor through because I got two more glasses to get to. This is 37-year-old John, about to marry a good woman, but he wasn't a good man because he's still a hurt boy. And I ain't the only husband in here that's blown it and made bad decisions because of something that had nothing to do with the wife. It has something to do with something that happened when you were little and you got rejected when you were younger and then all of a sudden now somebody's paying you attention and it don't matter that you got real love at home. You'd rather take the illusion than the real love because at least the illusion helps you heal the broken part of you that was never talked to when you were little. So here I am at 37 years old trying to marry a good woman when I'm still a broken little boy. Have some water. Tell somebody, take a drink. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now I'm 50 years old. And it's the second Sunday in October of 2023. And I've decided I'm not going to live in the shame of four-year-olds. 12-year-old, 21-year-old, and 37-year-old John, 50-year-old John, 50, jubilee, debt cancellation, freedom from bondage. That John is going to drink the whole cup because I'm tired of running from the other four of y'all, and the other four of y'all been sabotaging my marriage, my ministry, and my manhood. And I'm here to tell you I'm tired of being unhealthy, unhappy, and unholy. Somebody needs to get free other than me. But if you don't, I will. Excuse me while I drink this word. running from Esau no more. I'm not running from other versions of me anymore. All of y'all come sit down at the table. Four-year-old, sit down. Twelve-year-old, come sit down. Ah, 21-year-old, come sit down. 37-year-old, come sit down. I'm here to have a conversation with you. I'm here to tell all of me. See, you missed it. I didn't say you because they, they not outside, they in here. I'm here to tell all of me. All of us are getting ready to submit to the word of God. You are healed, four-year-old John. You are not the abuse. It wasn't your fault. So you go ahead and be free. Oh, and take your seat at the table as one who has authority. Ah, 12-year-old John, the pornography that you were introduced to did not come from you, but it touched something that was in your soul. But I'm here to tell you, you are free from that moment, and you are not your bondage, and you are not your past. You are not an addict whom the sun sets free. It's free indeed. Take your seat. Twenty-one year old John whose heart was broken because you went to pastors looking for leadership and they tried to sleep with you. I need you to forgive those pastors that dropped you. And if you don't know why you went through the pain and the tears of that moment, it's so that you would never repeat that thing. 
That's why I have a heart for kids because of what happened to me. That's why I fight for young preachers and young leaders because I know what happened to me. They didn't reject you. They rejected an invitation to be a witness to the anointing. You're healed. 37-year-old John, you wanted to do right. That's why you married that girl. Because you knew you needed something to break the bonds of the, the, the chains you had lived in. You were terrified on your wedding day because you knew you weren't ready. I wasn't ready. Not in the natural, but in the spirit. I made a faith move. And now here I am at 50 years old and I'm reconciling the four-year-old, the 12-year-old, the 21-year-old, the 37-year-old. The 12-year-old that got introduced to porn, I'm 50. 50 minus 12 is 38. How long was the man infirm? 38 years, but your bondage ends today. Do you want to be made whole? Now, I need you to hear me. The other versions of you are not going to go away quietly, so you're going to have to wrestle, and you're going to have to let the other versions of you know you're not winning. You're not winning. Your seat is over. I'm not staying in bondage, and whatever I got to do, I'm going to get free, but I'm not staying in that thing. I'm not staying broken. I'm not going to give you a mic. I'm not going to give you my future. You are not going to keep me in my past. I break everything that is trying to hold me hostage for whom the sun sets. You got to wrestle. And when you finally fight, God's going to touch your hips. But don't let go. Because you've been fighting your whole life for what's about to happen next. I feel God. Somebody's about to cry out freedom. When he touches your hip. Ah! When God touches the thing that's been sensitive. When he touches the thing that you've never let anybody else see. When you let him touch it, he shrinks it. It's not as big as you thought it was. They missed it, Pastor Junius. Let God touch it. It's not as big as you thought it was. God has the power to shrink. Your trauma, shrink. Your shame, shrink. Your pain, shrink. The fear shrink the past. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. Help me, Jesus. He said, what's your name? My name is four-year-old John. I'm 12-year-old John. I'm 21-year-old John. I'm 37-year-old John. I'm 50-year-old John. No, you're not John John from Mitchell Avenue. You're not, you're not the kid addicted to porn. You're not the 21-year-old unsure of himself. You're not the 37 scared, your 37-year-old scared little boy trying to marry and trying to be a man. You fought. You've been fighting with, with God and with man. And the 50-year-old you is wrestling right now. So now I gotta shrink your hip. So now you're going to limp because when you've been a pimp your whole life, you can't pimp into your destiny. You have to limp into your destiny. So today, God says, I'm changing your name from broken, in shame, abused to overcomer. Victorious, powerful, faithful, anointed, husband, father, 
not an adulterer, not a fornicator, not a luster. I am not a title. I am a man of God. I'm a daughter of the king. I'm a child of the most high. Am I talking to anybody today? If there's anything in your life that you need to get off of your life, if there's any chain, get to the altar. Don't wait. Get to the altar. And as you walk, you're wrestling. Get to the altar. If there's anything that you need to get free from, get to the altar. Don't sit there and look at me. Don't grab your purse and leave. That goes for musicians too. Get to the altar. Make four or five rows in the front. Do whatever you have to do. Get here. Move quick. Move quick. Y'all moving too slow. Move. Like your freedom depended on it. Move. You, it's all right, Fairbanks. It's all right, brother. Help me, Jesus. John, you leave them offering baskets out. God told me some people are going to be sowing out of their new freedom. Some of you are saying, well, I'm not moving because I don't really get down with church like that. This ain't about church. This is about you and God. You know what's been going on in your life. Some of y'all got weed in your pocket right now. Some of y'all got condoms because you was going to smash right after church. I'm here to tell you, God has given you an opportunity to get free. Why would you wait? Hands lifted as a symbol of your surrender. Say it out loud. Say, Jesus, you can have every part of me. Watch this. Every version of me. Every wounded part. Every confused part. Every orphaned part. <laughs> and I declare that I'm an overcomer. I am healed. I am whole. I am who you intended. In the name of Jesus. Father, reconcile the different versions of me. Reconcile all of us. So that when we leave this place, we know without a shadow of a doubt that we are free. We will not function out of our addiction, out of our brokenness, out of our shame, out of our pain. We will be free. And we will be free forever. Listen to me. I said we free forever. Everybody do me a favor. Look up here at me. The last thing I'm going to say, and then we're going to give God a praise and a sound of freedom that we've been waiting to give my heart our whole lives you're not the only one sis I've been crying for days knowing that I was going to have to get up here and face the demons that have been trying to kill me <laughs> I need everybody to look up here God said your name ain't Jacob you are not your mistake you are not what your mama named you there was another nation in you Israel a prince with God and man. Listen to me very carefully. I said, God, well, what happened to Jacob? Did you kill him? He said, no, that's why I said I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. I, I named you Israel, but I wanted to heal Jacob. Jacob submitted will serve you well. Ab, did you hear? Jacob understood some principles in business. He was a shrewd businessman, but he needed integrity. Israel brings integrity to your street knowledge. So if you sling and dope on the corner, when you get saved, now God gives you a wisdom that you can take what you learned on the streets. Now you got the Holy Ghost. You can put that together and you can do anything. <laughs> Lift one hand. Say, Jacob. 
How many Jacobs are in here? How many of us have, have, have been a trickster or a supplant? How many of us have lied, done something wrong? How many of us? Watch this. Now throw that other hand up and say, Israel, you have contended with God and with man, and you have prevailed. Now, when you get victory, there's a sound that accompanies victory. I said, there's a sound, Israel. I want you to make Jacob bow down and let Israel arise. Shout out like you're free. let anybody stop you from getting free you need to shout you need to cry do it some of y'all need to get saved some of y'all need to join this church I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to break through the crowd get up these steps and stand behind me pastor Robert stand near me if you're gonna get saved or you want to join this church get on this stage right now don't wait don't wait don't wait and nobody else is leaving Somebody needs to join this church. Tell them, excuse me. Imagine me loving what I see when the mirror looks at me. Can you, can you imagine me saying no to thoughts that try to control me, remembering all you told me? Can you imagine me? Over what my daddy did and I wanna free and not be that way again. Imagine me being free, trusting you totally. Don't leave, finally I can imagine me. Break it down. The Lord told me that some of you he spoke to, you need to sow a seed into this word commemorating your freedom. When Abraham got a word from Melchizedek, he sowed a seed that followed him for the rest of his days. How many people know this is the word of the Lord? Listen, whether you give electronically or something before you leave, you need to sow if the Lord told you to do it. For those who are joining, Come up here if you're joining or getting saved. It's all gone. It's gone. Hey, gone. It's gone. All gone. Hey, gone. All the pain. Gone. All the shame. Gone. It's what? Gone. All the guilt. Gone. All your past. Gone. All the tears. Gone. It's gone. gone. Everything. Gone. All of it. Gone. Once and for all. Gone. Can't believe. It's gone, it's gone, everything, all of it, it's all gone, 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 it's gone, all gone, oh na na oh na 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 oh na 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 oh na 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 you're free, y'all, oh na 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 Face it and get free from it through Jesus Christ. 
everybody join with our new family here. Stay with her. Stay right there with her. I want everybody to pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You're my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Give God the greatest shout of freedom. I'm not going to announce. Just go over there and walk them over. You walk them over. I'm, but they're still worshiping. Listen, I know service ran long, but if this is the price of freedom, it was worth it. Can I get an amen? This sermon series continues next week. Who's coming back? Who's going to invite somebody? And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. I love y'all. You free now. Touch five people, tell them freedom looks good on you. Freedom looks good on you. And if you need to stay here, stay right here. We love you.